If there is a message for us today, I believe it is to learn to live from our heart in love. These short lessons, hopefully, will help to inspire you to live with purpose, love passionately, and inspire others. We are the change agent our world needs. I'm Helen Taves. Step into the river today with me to explore the mysteries of God. They are not hidden from us, but for us to discover. Started. Well, um, you know, I, I want to just start out by saying I, I, I mean, in addition to what I've already said, uh, it has been truly um, an honor to to be able to call Helen Taves friend. Um, she is just such an incredible woman um, with a with a relationship with father at such depths and and I love how Helen never is always willing to explore the unknown explore the undescribed um with no with no expectations or hold, holding on like this it has to be a certain way and um those of you who have known Helen for far longer than I have know that to be true at probably a level I haven't yet discovered. <laughs> and, uh, but I just want to honor, honor Helen and Ed and um, who they are in father, what they bring and, and how they express father's heart in such a beautiful way. Um, it's just a delight. And it's a delight to have you ha getting to do this with you today and what we're going to share. Um, and again, we want to honor all of the dads on this call, Father's Day. You all, I mean, you, 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 we honor you greatly. We love you and, um, are, are really, truly, um, blessed by your lives. Well, let's pray before we get started. And, um, Father, I thank you for this morning. I thank you for what you are doing through us, in us, from us, what you are releasing in this day and in our, our lives that are just breathtaking. We love and honor you greatly, Lord. We give you this time to, to be yourself in our midst to share and 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 reveal your heart and your thoughts through every word that's spoken this morning we engage you fully in the center of your heart thank you father amen amen Well, this morning is going to be a little different than uh, what our normal Sunday morning convergence is. Or, you know, we, we normally do, uh, I share a little bit, and then we have this incredible dialogue and conversation around whatever topic Father has, has brought up on a given, uh, a given Sunday. But today, uh, as I mentioned in our uh, in our signal group, um, Helen and I have been in conversations for several months um, about a seminar um, course uh, that we are going to start in September called the What If Chronicles. And I let me pause by saying, Helen, you just jump in. Any time in this, in the whole thing that, that if you have something you want to add, all right. So, um, because this isn't just Kim today, this is Helen and Kim. Um, and so the what if chronicles, um, I'm just going to give you a, a, a course description. If, if you can bear with me to do that, um, because I think this is so, um, important. The What If Chronicles is a 12-week course 
So often we, as we transition from one time to another, we find ourselves carrying the past understanding into the new. Okay. Hello, Miss Albertina. Good to have you on. Just like a caterpillar must dissolve the old self to become brand new, so it is with many concepts of belief in our lives. The series, the What If Chronicles, is to help that transformation. The What If Chronicles come from many months of discussions between Helen and I and our personal desire to inspire others. Some of the deeper truths that we've discovered as we've um, processed and, and walked this road together is what we have implemented and experienced in our own personal lives and have us sensing that now is the time to share. And I say that from a place of, I. we say that from a place of, we know we're not the only ones that are feeling that shift. We'd like to invite through the What If Chronicles, we'd like to invite you to do this new course of study and activation and come on this journey with us. Now, what what is the What If Chronicles? What are they about? Well, it is a, a participation that the only prerequisites we request is that you be familiar with past lessons that both Helen and I have talked about and shared. Um, On the River 474, it's things like heart brain coherence, the God code, the energy centers, meditation. And um, with Kim Whitman Ministries on our YouTube channel, you can find a series of the I Am uh, series that you could listen to. And of course, your own desire, your own desire to step into and move from what if, from that creative place with father. So with the the sessions, the lessons that I've mentioned uh, um, that Helen has released, those can be found on her website, theriver474.com. And they'll just help you be familiar. So what are some of the what if topics that we're going to adventure through? Things like, now this is not an a, um, exclusive list, right? This is just starting off points. But things like, topics like, what if God doesn't have a name? What if being human is the most powerful entity on earth? What if you could recognize your frequency to live in the highest frequency possible? What if, what if you are source and resource? What if you are the manifestation of perfection? What if you can actually manifest your desires? What if you could meet your intention? And and y'all, that is just like the top of the pin where father might and will be taking us. So what we're going to do through this course, it's going to start September 12th and end December 2nd. And it's going to be two classes per week that will be recorded. The first class will be Tuesday evenings. And the second class will be Saturdays at noon. So Tuesdays at 7 Central Standard Time. Saturdays at noon Central Standard Time. And the Tuesday class will be in only one hour. And it'll be similar to what we're going to do today. Now, today, um, as as you experience, today will be both Helen and I speaking, but during the course, it will be either Helen or I. Just that'll be the only difference on Tuesdays. And on Tuesdays, like today, there won't be any additional Q&A or 
um, our normal dialogue at the end. So I just want to say for all of y'all who normally join us on, on Sunday mornings for Convergence, today we won't have any dialogue at the end. And that's going to be different. But what I want to encourage you to do as we share today, write down your questions or your comments. Write those things down. And of course, you will have the recording from today. I'll post that in our signal group and I'll send it to Helen as well so she can uh, share it with all of the, the River 474 folks that are not part of the signal group. Because I want you to write down your questions. I want you to write down your comments. Because for the course on Saturdays, that will be our time of mentoring. And it'll be a two-hour uh, session from 12 noon central to 2 p.m. And during that session will be not only testimonies, but it'll be question and answers. It'll be activations. It'll be meditation. It will be mentoring every week. Now, in addition, what you'll get if you if you register for the class is Helen and I will be sending everyone who registers and is participating a PDF of our course notes. So everything that Helen or I share on, on a given Tuesday, you will receive the course notes of that, our notes, our outline, as well as activations and meditation. Sound exciting? I'm so excited about this. So you will get access, those that are registered, you'll get access to the recordings of both, both the Tuesday night and the Saturday afternoon. And that way you can re-engage and listen to, or if you've not been able to join us on, you know, one or both, you'll be able to participate with what's happening during the course of the, of the course, during the course of the course. Um, and if you are, what we're asking everyone during the course that September 12th through December 2nd, if you have questions to email those to us and that way we can, we can purpose to focus the beginning of our um, Saturday morning mentoring session with those questions, um, kind of like that kicking off direction type thing. So are you excited? Helen, you want, do you have anything you want to add? Yeah, no, <clears throat> that's really great. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, what, one of the things that happened with Kim and I in our conversations, we would meet actually uh, at least once, once a week and we would get into conversations that we, st we would start to laugh and say, I wish we could share this. So our, our first uh, thoughts to this was to start a start a series called Helen and Kim Unplugged, but neither one of us have the heart to you to people just watching, right? Because nothing changes out of watching. Well, very little, very little changes. It's when we internalize and activate what it is that that we're learning, and we don't want to be a people anymore that just go from information to information to information that uh, I shared on, on the river on Wednesday. I said, that's often what we do at conferences. We, we, <clears throat> we pick up the buzz, right? And we're really excited and, and we, we want more, but instead of going and activating and being purposeful about what it is that we've learned, what we do is we say, well, where's the next conference? I want more. Where the more is already in you. There won't be anything you hear that isn't already in you. And there isn't any, because we are part of part of individually of, of one another but we are all part of christ consciousness and everything is already there so what we're going to do is we're going to learn how to tap into that it's not about kim or me because we're coming to you and saying one of the answers to your questions is going to be gee i don't know really because we've got as many what ifs it, it, and but 
what we what we want to do is not ignore them not not just glance over but but in earnest conversation and truthful transparent conversations deal with some of the things attached to these things that we that that Kim and I have have just openly with each other talked about and they may not sit well with you they they may be challenging and you and we're happy with that because they're not all sitting well with us what we have are the what if questions and we we've been really enjoying that that process but what we want to give you is as much as we can in way of of sharing the sharing time and then put it together in a document that you can can download and with each Tuesday, there's going to be different. We're going to suggest that that there'll be instructions, right? So that will help right. you. You can do it or not. There is no test at the end of this, really and truly. There, this is this is just for sharing. And but you know, we're going to talk about about the importance of of journaling. What does that do when you put it together? What what is meditation? Well, it's becoming familiar with something, right? Uh, what is the difference between ascension in position and ascension just going in the stars? We're, the, these are things that we're going to do. But there's also activations that you may not have tried before or, or that we will share with you in this, this process because they melt science and spirituality together. And we have these aha moments really and truly our body and spirit do connect. And, the, and it's very important. So there, there's a lot that that we want to share in the process. We want you to go away with with some of our notes. We're not going to transcribe the meetings, but the notes and you know references, things for your own study will be in there to the best of our ability. Sometimes we go chasing rabbits, but that's part of the fun, right? So we're not we we don't want to be disrespectful. We want to just have fun. Girls just want to have fun, guys. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> okay. All right. Yeah. And like today, okay. Uh, yes, sister has her hand up. Go ahead, sister. And I don't mean to ask questions on the day we're not asking questions, but could you... <laughs> I do follow directions, guys. Really, really. Normally, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a rule follower, but today I just have a question. Um, You're breaking you out, sister. You're I'm breaking, breaking out. out. That's right. I'm, I'm expanding myself. I'm expanding. Um, real quick, could each one of you um, explain if uh, for uh, Kim Whitman Ministries and the River Four Seven Four for those that have not been on one or the other. Um, to see those videos or things you've talked about, you guys said to get ready for what's coming. Um, is there a thing that you need to do to see those? Do you need to sign in, sign up, um, you know, anything like that? If you guys could like, I've, I'm just not sure if some people maybe haven't been on Kim Whitman Ministries yet, or even the River 474 yet. And if there's something that we need to do to sign up to see those, those, you know, videos or those, you know, commentaries to get ready. I thought maybe, you know, just saying what we need to do to do that. Oh, that's really good, sister. Um, Helen, I'll let you go first and then I will, and then I will share. Sure. Uh, 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 for the rest of that, you'll see a, a headline that says lessons and uh, all, all of what we've just, uh, it says my internet is unstable. Can you hear me? Okay. I, we can now. Um, so it was, I'm sorry. Go ahead. Okay. I went ahead and posted uh, the River Force and Four lessons in the chat if anybody wants to get on. Perfect. Perfect. Thank you. All the lessons are there. And I knew what heartbreak will hear. 474 co host who knows a lot more than I do. <clears throat> and I appreciate that. Thank you, Kathy. Uh, yeah, so that's all you have to do. There's no sign up or anything, just uh, it's a show up, not a sign up. How's that? There you go. Um, and and your your uh, internet was a little bit unstable there, Helen. So just to reiterate what Helen and Kathy said in the chat is the link for, <clears throat> pardon me, the lessons that you can get to for Helen's. 
And then um, kimwhitman.com is the place that you can go. You, you do have to sign up. It's free to get a membership. It doesn't cost you anything, but it is the place that we're storing all of our, uh, our videos. They're stored on our website uh, exclusively. Um, there are some older videos from last year on YouTube, on our YouTube channel, Kim Whitman Ministries, um, that you can find. There may be some of the I am stuff on there. And um, but if you would like to sign up for a uh, a membership, if you will, um, you can do that. And then it gives you access to all of our Sunday morning convergence and everything that we talk about and share the full link videos on Sunday morning. So um, yeah. Thank you, sister, for putting that in the chat. And Kathy, thank you for putting uh, Helen's link in the chat. I appreciate that. Helen, go ahead. Yeah, uh, on the river, uh, <clears throat> a lot of the uh, I am, not a lot, but uh, uh, four or five of the I am uh, series that Kim started are on there as well. And I don't, that doesn't mean I don't want you to, to go to Kim Whitman Ministries, but uh, <clears throat> it is available we we that's sort of part of our um uh thread as well is to to have those on on the river so there's it's a win-win situation here it is it really is and and same with helen on on our page you can find all of the the times that she's shared with us and i'm mean, y'all it's incredible so we say all of that to say they're prerequisites just if you haven't been with us when those things have been shared and released or you would like to refresh before we start in September. And for today, what we're actually going to do is this is a taste of what the, the course will feel like and be, how it will flow. Um, today, like I said, we're not going to do any Q&A at the end or any discussion at the end. It's just going to be Helen and I sharing and back and forth with each other. Um, but you won't want to miss Wednesday night. If you can join us Wednesday night on the river, we are going to do a taste of what the mentoring session will be. So Wednesday night, this coming Wednesday night will be a, a session of all the, the testimonies, the Q and A, uh, the, the, um, the uh, activations, the meditation, all of that will be compacted into Wednesday night. The River 474. So if you want to be part of that, if you want to join us and you don't normally get an invitation from Helen, Helen, can they email you a request? All right. So Kathy, would you mind putting in the chat where they need to email? If you don't already get an email uh, invitation from Helen to join the River 474 on a Wednesday night, uh, just email and, and she will add you. And it's 7 p.m. Central Time, 7 p.m. Central Time. And um, so anyway, that is going to be a taste of what the What If Chronicles mentoring sessions will look like and feel like. All right. Helen, do you want to add anything to that? Uh, yes, uh, we're going to send out a, it may be a little bit late because Father's Day and uh, we're in a little jet lag with that. Uh, we're going to send you a PDF from, to, from today, a little bit of a, a lay of the land, uh, but it, it won't be, it won't necessarily be the one we send out later just to keep everything on track. Um, and if you don't get one and you're on this call by some, for some reason, then just email me and I will get it to you Amen. tomorrow, tomorrow. <laughs> okay. We're going to do it that way. Not putting it out, uh, public, public, uh, because it, it's a time sensitive thing for, for this, um, this morning. Just Amen. Amen. There was something I was going to say about that, but I have forgotten. Oh, well, must not be important. And if Holy Spirit wants to remind me, he can. She can. 
<laughs> All right, are you guys ready to get started? Okay, I'm excited. So Helen and I decided that we wanted to touch on, and, and I know you all know this, but this is not an exhaustive conversation because it really starts with what if. And, and she and I, as we were talking about doing this together and giving our family, you all, a taste of what, what father has put on our heart about the what if chronicles. Um, this first topic we thought would be just fun. <laughs> and that is what if being human is the most important thing? What if? And it as as many of you know, those especially those of you that join us Sunday mornings, the last, I don't know, I guess it was probably a couple months ago or so now. Um, there were two things that father shared with me Two, he woke me up in the middle of the night and one was two different times, two different days, two different conversations that have melded together. And that is, um, your body is my throne. The first, the first thing he said to me was your body is my throne. And then the other thing he said to me was, your eyes see or create the door. Your mouth opens it. Your eyes see or create the door. Your mouth opens it. Now that word see, I found this in interesting. When I looked up the word see, S-E-E, -E, that is, they call that a demonstrative particle. The, and I found this so interesting. And that means the specific function is to draw your attention to whatever immediately follows a word or an entire phrase. Let me read that again. The function of a demonstrative particle that word c is a demonstrative particle the function of that demonstrative particle is to draw your attention to whatever immediately follows either that word or the entire phrase that immediately follows that word also a demonstrative particle can stand alone by itself it is a meaning, a definition, a realm, a dimension, all in and of itself. That's pretty important. So when you look at, I looked up the word C, and it mean, it is the word, the, the Hebrew word, hine, right? Hine is an a hey, noon, hey. And the, the meaning of that word see is to behold, to see, and get this. Y'all, you're not going to believe it. You're just not. You're just not going to believe it. What if? Are you kidding me? What if? That is what see means. It's not just to look at it, like be able to identify, okay, this is my water bottle. I see it. But it is literally the framework of what if. Back to father's word to me, your eyes see or create the door. Your mouth opens it. Your eyes see, create the door. Your mouth opens it. I mean, doesn't that just blow you away, Helen? I am, I am just 
I was not expecting that to be the definition of the word C. I was thinking in terms of, of all of the dimensions of what we physically know, subconsciously, consciously, unconsciously, about how we identify or frame things. But it really, if you think about that, it takes us to a place of you, we learn the skill of framing things the what based on what we understand, right? By our experiences, by definitions, by what we've learned in school, what we've learned by our parents, what we've learned by, from friends, from mentors, from tutors, from hard knocks. <laughs> but but what about all those things that father has been waiting for us to explore with him that are beyond our comfort zone, beyond our religious structure and context of this is that, this proves that, this, it can't be that because it's this, all of, all of those things. Would you agree, Helen, or is there more that you want to add to that? Uh, no, I want you to just keep going because I was actual. We were we were struggling with a name for what we're doing because we don't actually know what we're doing all the time. And so when when the conversation kept on going, what if, what if? And then when Kim unpacked what she just shared, we went, wow! And it just settled. It just settled. Right track. Still don't know everything that we should be doing, will be doing, but very excited to go. So right. thanks for that. Yeah. Well, so I I unpacked the the C word, right? S E E. And and hey, if I could just briefly share with y'all, hey, that letter, our friend, hey, is means divinity, breath, specific. Speci it's easy for me to say specificity specificity i i miss that one all the times i've engaged with hey but you know that's okay and then noon the, the letter our friend noon is faithfulness soul and emergence and y'all these are just these are just um i i condensed because I, it's not about, we're not doing a Hebrew study. Okay. So I know I'm, I'm just barely scratching the surface of the magnitude of where we could go with each one of these, but, but we want to stay on track with what father has given us to, so you all can do any kind of digging into those Hebrew letters that you would like to dig. Okay. Um, and then create that word create is bara. And we know that word from Bereshit, right? In beginning. Um, but it is the word create. Create meaning to shape, to form, or to fashion. And listen to this. So again, Father said, your eyes. I got to take a sidetrack here. Not just these but eyes all around. Why would we have eyes all around? If I look at myself as the wheel within the wheel, the Merkaba, that has eyes all around, what level of invitation is that not only inviting me into, but say about my very being that I've never even fathomed to embrace or allow be expressed if that is me? And what would it look like? What if we begin to function at that level? where I begin to engage my eyes all around -ness Okay, we'll keep going. Create. I agree, Tess. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> or like Jay Bennett, I've got the guns. I'm always doing the, the guns up. <laughs> anyway, create. It means to shape to form or to fashion. 
That's our responsibility, what we've been created to do and be. Now, that word fashion caught my attention. Okay. And do you know fashion has to do with fashioning of the heavens and the earth, fashioning of individual man? And I'm talking humanity, not just male. Fashion of new conditions and new circumstances. Fashion of transformations. We, especially in the Western culture, are very accustomed to introspective thought, idea, dialogue. We even have this concept uh, or belief system that I need to work on me first before I can be good to the world or before I can be good to somebody else, good for somebody else, a good in a relationship, whether it's marriage, friendship, whatever. I need to work here first. And I'm not, I'm not saying any of that's bad. This is not a bad and good thing. This is simply a, but what if it's bigger than that? Because, because all of us, especially on this call or anybody that's going to be listening to this, this teaching, this sharing that Helen and I are doing today, I can probably bet money. You've done a lot of that. We have done a lot of that introspective work. Nothing wrong with it. But we have eyes all around for a reason. And because it's much bigger, our our governance is much greater and bigger than just introspective, let me take care of me. Father wants us to expand expand look out right it starts here but like helen said earlier i have everything i need i already have everything i need right in here because it begins in father It begins from my union and oneness with him, in him, from him. And that union and oneness looks like something. I mean, Helen, wouldn't you agree? What would would that look like if we begin to, instead of looking at things from a broken and missing place, that everything that tries to grab my attention, I turn it on its heel and say, hey, Father, what do you think about that? How are we going to export your will desire and what you're meditating on into the into the earth that actually transforms everything right helen and what if we did it as a collective what if we did it in the true sense of being one what if we stopped with the the me you and the separation and completely did it as one we would be the most powerful force to be reckoned with ever on this planet. Well, and I like what you just said there, collect as one. I mean, that that sparks my thinking. You know how so many times, um, and we've talked about this, where we think we're the, like, I'm the only one praying for the weather. <laughs> I The weather and I are really good friends, <laughs> truly. But but realizing that there are others speaking to the weather and what would happen if we just, if I connect my heart, not only with what father is meditating on, but those around me that are also engaging with the weather and begin to position my heart in union and oneness that we that we are are partnering with what father's meditating on in the same way and capacity he's meditating and seeing it how will that shift things amen 
Would you agree, Helen? Or do you have something else you want to add to that? No, I don't want to add. I'll, I love the I love the thread that you're on, uh, and I, I think we need to realize as well understanding. And you're using the term meditation, or he's meditating on that. He he knows. He knows. He is very familiar with already. So what we're doing is we're becoming not the meditators to link, but meditative, like we are it in oneness with him that has already created the answer that we're that we step into I mean, it's just a lovely mm. glad you brought it up but we could really chase a couple of rabbits here we could and you know i what something you just said a second ago about he has already created the answer i think that is so critical especially for the what if chronicles course, because it's moving out of what you just said. The, the answer is already present, released. And if I choose, I can, I literally can choose to live out from that answer and it being a done deal, or I can choose to feel like I'm always trying to uh, catch up to the answer that I'm trying to get to the answer to then be able to move. And that's a different heart position. Wouldn't you agree, Helen? Completely. And, and our life is all about the heart position, right? right? What if we totally understood that all has been created, it's all good, and it's already established, and it's in us? created in his image like we are pretty important to him we are really pretty important and being human is probably one of the most exciting um, aspects of of who we are i totally agree i you know a couple weeks ago um we, we were, no, last weekend, last weekend, I wasn't here, uh, Tom and I had gone to El Paso to go to our niece's graduate, high school graduation, and um, I was talking to uh, my, uh, Todd's family, my in-laws, and brothers and sisters, and, and, and we were talking, to, I think we were talking about homeopathic remedies, or something like that, and, um, and we're all pretty, pretty involved in, um, holistic uh means and and so we're talking you know just about that and and suddenly holy spirit and i are in this conversation about uh, you, the answers in you right and i'm not going to go expound on that because that's for a, a whole different topic but but back to even what we talked about at the beginning Every answer is already in me. It's already in me. It's already been not only um, created and made and birthed in me, it's just waiting for an expression out of me. And it reminded me as I was as I was in this dialogue with the Lord, one morning, a couple of weeks ago in the middle of the night, I think it was like three or something. I woke up and I couldn't, I was, I didn't go back to sleep because we were in a really great conversation. But Jesus said to me, you've not understood my resurrection. Now, isn't that an exciting invitational statement? Because a lot of what we've understood is um, his body, you know, was crucified, died, and he rose again. And that's fine. And there's nothing wrong with that. But the, the statement he made was an invitation to understand the magnitude of this incredible vehicle that we have been gifted that we've not understood the magnitude of what this gift is. Not just because we stand in the earth, but in every dimension that we move in, in this throne, 
the wheel within the wheel with eyes all around that is created and made for extreme glory. It is extreme glory. And we are, I love when Helen says, I want to break the four minute mile. We are the people that break the four minute mile. I just want to say again in absolute amen to that. We are the people that are breaking this four minute mile about this beautiful glory piece that we've been gifted and given to use and function in from that like Christ, when he said, you've not understood my resurrection, it wasn't about um, all the things that religion has given us to symbolize or to say, this is what his resurrection did for us. That's all that's true, but it's so much bigger, so much bigger. Amen. Helen, do you have anything you want to add to that or a different place you want to go with that? Or or something else? <laughs> no, I, I I feel that this this particular topic is so incredibly important. Uh, and for us to really have a settled heart in knowing how important we are. And and the importance of being human. One of the one of the lessons that I've I've taught is in in the God Code, which unpacks the fact that within every cell of our body is is God has encoded Himself in our carbon nature, in our how we were were uh, created. The Yod He Vav is intrinsically part of who we are and that's coming out of science that's not just coming out of of um, religious studies or hebrew studies or anything we are so important that he signed himself into us i my mind i like i i have i am actually not wanting to interrupt and take us on an, another um aspect of that but just so you know my god my mind doesn't just work in in the same way as kim does because i spend okay that was a really wrong way to say it we're totally in agreement actually with with where we are positioned and how we are in each other and in god but as i look at the world around me we're different. Uh, we're different generations, uh, you know. Kim and I in different parts of our life, but I'm looking at where we are now. Very interested in uh, the science and spirituality coming together. So you'll hear a lot of the things that that I share come from that point of view, mm -hmm. because I have a very, very strong um, alignment with people who are in the scientific realm. I'm not a scientist, but I can read and I can listen. And I have a, 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 a critical thinking that comes to all that. And part of me for the generations that we are in right now says, wait a minute, guys, you've got to know all of what Kim just said. Like uh, the world needs to know, globally needs to know all of what Kim has, has just shared. The fact of the matter, it isn't a reality to everyone because they'll put it into a box that says, oh, yeah, that's for Christians and churchgoers. Well, we're saying, no, not at all, actually. It's for anyone who turns their face and says, oh, God, mm -hmm. that's it. That's all. He, he has made all of us, wherever we come from. It's not denominational. It's not not religious. It's not cultural. It's not. It's his. Is his creation who we are? And when he created us, he. It's recorded. He said, and it's very good. Very good. So from there, knowing all things that are created is good. 
is an important focus part when you realize because we we go into the dark side but one of the things that has come up in my heart over and over is the time that we are living in right now and the time that 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 we are living in and what we are being bombarded what this the culture that we're living in is being bombarded with is a very very serious attack on us being human because what's happening is in the technology that's available for us we are at a, a brink right now of actually possible extinction and i'm not i'm not bringing words to to that prophetically at all as a matter of fact i'm completely in the opposite but i do not want to a partner with in any way some of the things that are are happening around us and to help us to to stand up and say now just a minute i i hear what you're saying we don't need to be in in arguments but what we what we can do is to speak out is to have conversations right not this is this is not about i'm right you're wrong you should i should this is good this is bad this just is present in our world right now my challenge is what are we going to do about it i was i was um reading from a, a person that i i quite enjoy listening to at times his name is brooks agnew and uh last sunday I, I just want to read a little bit of of what he wrote that really challenged me he says uh it, he called it, he actually called it the importance of being human it's almost like we had this mind meld you know wow. brooks this is what we're talking about this on on sunday he says mitigating the ex the risk of extinction from artificial intelligence should be a global priority alongside other social political scale risks such as pandemics and nuclear war so i read that and i go okay wow uh, that has so much in it that could explode this statement made headlines around the world with many media reports suggesting that experts now now believe this is a, a cnn article this was a title to the article artificial intelligence could lead to human extinction what do we do with that right what do we do with that when we realize when when this community that's on this on this call realizes that first of all we are not ever going to be extinct we we come from source we come from our creator we come from our our father created there that's where we're going back and that's the nothing it becomes extinct so if we feed into so when when uh, some something like uh, CNN puts out an article like that what i want to do is encourage us to say wow that's worthy of conversation but let's not lose our focus that we are created in the image of god with his signature in us what do you do with that part so we just don't buy into whatever it, it, it said, he said, given enough time, artificial intelligence could change our society in ways we cannot even imagine it right now. Well, in January, when uh, a couple of weeks after the artificial intelligence um, uh, gadget, uh, what's a chat, chat bot, chat oh, why GPT. am I losing? Chat GPT uh, came out. It has since then, six months later, gone viral and affecting probably every student every uh business it, it it's become viral literally and and we can't afford to ignore it but we can't afford either to give it energy because what we focus on expands right so there's that that tension of okay what do we do with this not ignore, ignoring it i always feel it's the wrong thing it's like well, we can't talk about uh and that's what what kim and i get into all the time are the things that that we don't we're not afraid to talk about it we're not afraid to bring out references we're not afraid to say to each other what if this takes over 
What are we going to do? How are we going to support the system that, that we are living in? Especially our young people, especially the generations coming up that are totally enamored by something that they don't have the opposite understanding to, which is what Kim was, was bringing. But you see, it's a, it's a huge subject. Um, it says, but in, in this article, I'm just going to bring out one point. I have, uh, I have tons of, of material on this. I did a whole study on it a couple of years ago that uh, really showed the, the back then the frightening path that society was on with artificial in, intelligence from the part of, of having um, uh, marrying, how, how do you like this? Marrying a, a robot, marrying, seriously, I have it, I have it here. It's all this stuff that's, that's come down the pipe, really, really, really um, infiltrating people at, at, you know, you laugh about it. When uh, you laugh, right? When you hear of, it, of somebody that, that actually is, uh, marries a robot. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, here's, here's the thing. Uh, a 31 year old Chinese engineer, expert in artificial intelligence, married a female robot built by himself as he got tired of not finding a human wife. The ceremony was attended by his mother, friends, classmates from the university, as reported by several Chinese me media in 2017. That's not that long ago. Also, uh, and I won't go into everything, but they've created um, uh, robots where people are actually choosing to, to have these robots in their home that are equipped with artificial intelligence and a built-in camera so it can recognize you. And these are baby robots for people who would rather relate in that fashion uh, instead of children. Baby robot was designed to invoke an emotional connection that has been unveiled in Japan where plummeting birth rates have left many couples without children. These aren't funny. These are really, really sad. When the first robot, Sophie, was, uh, and you probably all know about it, um, was sent to the United Nations, spoke before the United Nations, to which I wanted to say, you're kidding, right? No, it was a robot named Sophie, made in the image of um, Audrey Hepburn. And not only that, Sophia has a passport. She's a citizen of Saudi Arabia. Okay. Uh, there's the mood changing implants that can go in. Uh, so you don't have to deal with, with your humanness or all the things that we are so wonderfully created for and, and with. Uh, you could have an implant if you want. There's nano drone um, technology that is kind of, kind of scary. There's all sorts of that. So this, this, um, one of one of them, no, I won't go there. But they 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 actually have weapons now created weapons that are created that are and you can find it in in scripture. I'm going to look for the the definition here so I don't confuse anybody. Um, there's a there's weapons that appear, it's the XM25 that appears to be the perfect weapon for street or street fighting. It targets enemy fighter hiding behind walls and only breaking cover to fire occasionally. When fired, the explosive around could carry exactly one meter past the wall and explode with the force of a hand grenade. It's the ammunition, not the thing sending it. That is actually the definition of that particular weapon is actually found in the Bible. I'm going to leave that for another time. So we have all this kind of stuff going on around us. Do you know there have been papers served? So this artificial intelligence that, that is increasing exponentially is actually uh, starting a new religion. And this is where it affects a lot of people. As these chatbots become used by billions of people, it's inevitable that some of these users will see the AIs as higher beings. 
we must prepare for the implications. The new religion of artificial intelligence is called the way of the future, W-O-T-F. It represents an unlikely next act for Silicon Valley robotics wunderkind at the center of high stakes legal battle. Papers have been filed with the Internal Revenue Service in May, we're now in June, uh, name Lewandowski as the leader or dean of the new religion, as well as CEO of the nonprofit organization formed to run it. The documents state that the way of the future activities will focus on the realization, acceptance, and worship of a godhead based on artificial intelligence developed through computer hardware and software. This includes funding research to help create divine AI itself. No time on earth has been more so important to know our options. If you don't know your options, you don't have any. Uh, I'm not talking to us, to you about that. We know our options. Our heart is completely, completely settled in who, who Father is, who God is in us, who Christ is, all of that. It, that is our portion. That is our absolute delight. But the fact of the matter is around us and surrounding us, is all this other stuff coming at us. And you know what? We may not have had any time. We don't, Ed and I don't watch news. We have alternative discussion groups and, and other things that, that we enjoy, including our kids who are far more well um, established in, in what's happening as, and as believers, by the way. And it's become very, very um, frightening if you allow it to be. And I'm not sharing this to frighten you or to take you off your off the course, because really and truly, the most important part of our lives is to understand who we are, not just what's coming around. But we can't be ignorant. Don't be ignorant of what's going on around, because we need to make choices of what we put into our bodies, what we put into our, our lives, what we pay attention to, who we, who we uh, choose to walk with in, in this time. And what I'm presenting here is only a challenge to say, listen, we can't live in a box. We have to go outside of it. We have to be critical thinkers. Just because we dismiss something does not mean it doesn't exist. What it means is it doesn't exist for you at this time, but it exists around us. And we have generations uh, coming up. There, the fact that, that science is, are themselves asking the questions, can artificial intelligence have a conscience? These are really important questions. And I love how this particular article uh, talks about some of the things that computers can't do. Mm -hmm. The AI can't do. They won't feel joy, surprise, sadness, anger, disgust, contempt, fear, shame, silent, shyness, and guilt. Can't they they aren't creative creators they can take information and put it together in that creative bent but the, the creativity that comes from the source they can't do and the, there are human attributes that cannot be computed and that's why we have to be so strong in who we are and that's why we need, to, it's okay to ask the questions. It's okay to bring up certain conversations because you know what? I would rather have the conversations all, along the line of what Kim brought up. I found, I find that exciting. I find it edifying. I find it, uh, it, it brings far more what if questions to me. But I, I wanted to bring in that outside of the box. Mm -hmm. I wanted to say, you know what? It's okay to, to ask and, and to talk about. 
it, it's it's not a, a a right wrong good or bad but we when we come from the center place of con christ consciousness spending our time knowing where we who we are whose we are and that we are the the oneness that we're called to the oneness that we we live in we will be able to transcend all of of this type of thing that I just that I just shared, and we're going to be able to say to the answer to the answer: Could artificial intelligence lead, or or AI could lead to human extinction? My voice will be not on my watch. There you go. Absolutely no, and absolutely never. And as long as we are standing in our sovereignty, because he is sovereign, right? Our creator, our source, our father, our God, Christ consciousness is the sovereignty that we stand in. If we make decisions to go in any other direction, we give that up. We give it up. And we're not called to give it up. We're called to stand in it, be the voice in it, be the light in it, be the life in it, but not don't don't be caught up where. And the other thing that I'm finding with with the uh, I call them the my young people. My young people are heading towards sixty, not not sixteen, but we have conversations we're allowed to have these amazing conversations and, and without attacking each other bringing information bringing bringing things uh you know into the conversation don't worry about conversations but enjoy the establishing of ourselves as one together in the place that um, that we're called to and we're going deeper into so I know Kim, we've had many of these uh, conversations. We have. We're not coming from opposite points of view. We're trying to bring it together into a place to build strength, to build yeah. unity, to be one. Absolutely. Right. Amen. I agree with that. I agree with that. And I and to what Helen was sharing about that, which I think is so critical. Because we, and I'm just speaking broad brush, guys. This there's no there's no uh, condemnation, shame, or guilt. Uh, none of that is in is contained within what I'm about to say. But we've grown so accustomed and comfortable in this place of let me just stay here with Father and not ha not have to deal with or see all the other outside things because. I, one, I may not know how to respond to them. They're super heavy. They, they, they bring me down. Uh, they feel very oppressive and all those things. But in all of this, we, I go back to what father said, which is one, your body is my throne. And two, your eyes create the door, see the door, your mouth opens it. It's an and. They go together. They go together. I can, I I'm not created and made to to not not do any of those things, not see any of that because Father wants Himself expressed in full manifestation, and that, that looks like something. That looks like me seeing creating the door with my eyes all around and my mouth opening it it reminds every time i think about that of course i go to countless places with father in it but i am repeatedly reminded of peter's shadow healing that person on the street Peter, because of who he, his existence with Father, that I am this, that place where he knew who he was in completeness, 
he, he just, it, it, he couldn't help it. He wasn't trying to heal somebody. He wasn't, he didn't put any attention to it. He put no attention to it. As far as, oh, I see that person sick. I need to go do something. That's what I'm talking about. It wasn't that. Because he, the word, the scriptures say his shadow healed. Meaning that at least in my mind, the shadow one is behind you. So you've already walked past whatever was going on. But two, your attention wasn't there. And that is where we are at, especially when we are engaged in the what if chronicles and all of the what ifs father is going, we are going to go with father to the places that we've not even thought about. Because from that place, we literally are opening our mouths to open the door. To open the door for all of humanity, for all of creation. That word mouth opens, right? Mouth is a pay. And, and pay means to speak, to open, to begin. The beginning of something. The beginning of something. What if, what if our awareness that I am the wheel within the wheel with eyes all around is the beginning of something you've never even considered about yourself and how father wants to use us as that place of oneness because right, it's the macro and the micro. That place of oneness where I know if something is brought into my attention, I'm walking with father and some little thought swiftly runs through my head or my heart about something that I can literally in that instant get so accustomed to partnering in that place of oneness that I already know I'm engaging with all of y'all and, and Father, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, we are all partnering to release or open that whatever that Father wants open for creation to be transformed, for an aspect of his glory to be made manifest. An aspect like when Jesus was raised from the dead, everybody else was raised from the dead. I mean, have you ever stopped to think of what that looked like? Like in the earth. Conceptually, we can talk about it. We can celebrate it. We can do all those things. But, but do we really believe that that still happens? That, that that's like a thing. All of that, all of those places. Helen, did you want to add something to that? Well, I, I I'm sort of jumping out of my skin because um, Gina, she was on the line here for those of you who who know her and some that don't, gave an amazing testimony. Um, a few weeks ago that has yet to be posted, but it's being posted um, about exactly what you're talking about, exactly what you're you're talking about, what she did. And, and this, this is where uh, the mentoring part of, of our sharing will come and make things alive. She actually took what she learned from a session and woke up in in the morning and activated that and I was going to say by chance there's no chance with God but she set herself in a position to do exactly what you said and then the Lord took over the Lord took over and brought her into the tomb and shared all of, uh, well it was it's hers I'm not going to share it right now because it's really worth listening to but shared exactly what she did. But she it, it happened because she positioned herself purposefully 
to, to in, in that place. And that's part of what we're going, that, that is the only way we're going to move ahead into breaking the four minute mile is to experience the things that you're saying right now. And it's, it's happening. It like, it's truly, truly happening. So, so stay tuned. And I like what um, Tess shared too. She's, uh, she, she shared in the, in the chat. So I looked it up in the, in the uh, mirror uh, Ephesians 4 14. She said, the most dangerous life you can live in is an ignorant one. You're left like an infant on a ship out of control in the waves and winds of the storms of life. The fall of the dice dictates while the deceptive teachings of men and their distracting tricks entertain. And that is not who we want to be. Thank you for sharing that, Tess. That was really timely. Um, this next verse says, love gives truth its voice. And that really uh, is, a, is a great summary of, of where we're, we're positioning ourselves. We don't want to be ignorant. We don't want to be tossed uh, about. And we, we want to, our reality must be, never mind want to, we, we are the, 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 that love collectively together in each other, in him, that love that gives truth its voice. We're it, guys. We're it. We're it. And um, I'd like to say that there's really no turning back because we're already it. You know, it's, it's sort of one of Father's gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> you know, That's uh, glad for the free will and all, but gotcha. Yeah. That's the truth. Mm -hmm. That's the truth. Well, you oh, know what I, you know what I find. Be oh, did you want? To, did you have something else, Helen? No, you want to say? No, no. I'll I'll just go off in the wrong direction right now. You, will you not. know, you get sort of excited, right? And and uh, you know, when we go into the mentoring time on on this subject, uh, I really, I I know, I know, I'm going to start jumping up and down. And the reason is, I just want to say one more time, Kim and I aren't experts together. You know, you start putting the, the pieces together and you, you bring the parts. I was going to say parts of a puzzle. Actually, I don't think it's a puzzle. I, I think because he says the, the mysteries of God are not revealed from us. They're revealed for us. And that's what's, that's what's happening. So as these things come together, these mysteries are going to be um, be revealed in a greater and greater sense than if any any ministry. I don't care how how who or what or or whatever. Collectively, we're that that right, not individually. And, That's right. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, and I love you know what Helen just said. There weren't Helen and I are not experts. I know for me, and I and I this is true for Helen as well. I purpose to walk with Father in a place of childlikeness, knowing that He's going to reveal, and, and I, I He's already got my yes. It my yes is all we established that years ago. So that I look at and explore everything with him from that place of, yes, and I know what there's, there are things about whatever you're showing me that I don't understand, but you, you are already going to show me the tools I need to either say it, frame it, engage it, release it, whatever it is. It's already there. All I have to do is, is sit peacefully enough. And by sit, I mean, you do understand that's relative, right? I don't have to cease movement, but be still enough in my own being to see what he's giving me that are the tools that that thing he's showing me needs. That's it. That's it. And so I don't have you got all of you know there are things that come out of my mouth that I mentally didn't even know I knew as I'm saying it. I had a friend one time years ago 
uh, I, I, I was praying and I said, you know, father, you have permission to say through me, whatever it is you want to say, even if I don't know it. And even if I don't know what I'm saying. And this friend said, uh, that's a big statement. Are you sure you agree with that? <laughs> yes, I actually do. 100%. And how about if we put with that the actual doing part? The actual, Father, you've got my yes, not only in me speaking what needs to be spoken, because remember, my mouth opens the door, but also my doing what needs to be done. You've got that yes, too. Because they may be synonymous. I think that's the right word. And they may be separate. This say this and you need to go do that. You know what I mean? But we are at that place because we are it. I am the manifested glory. You are the manifested glory. You're not waiting to become it. You're not waiting for it to somehow show up on the scene. You're on the scene. Thus it is because you are, I am. And, and this, what if Chronicles, Helen and I, our heart is that it, it bring us into that place of fully realizing our I amness in a way we've not embraced as well as realize, oh, I already have permission to do that. I already have permission to go there. And even the places I've never even contemplated were possible. Right? Yeah, Jamie just Jamie just wrote the immortal must take on immortality. And, and I, I love reading that as well, because uh, it I want to I want to say the that has to happen now. That's not after you die. Right. This is this is something that the mortal can take on immortality. Now that's our portion that that is if you if we uh, go back and and look at the the beginning of how everything worked the the um, people uh, you know even Adam and Eve and in, in their stories uh, if if mortality had taken on immortality we wouldn't be here today mm -hmm. that is our portion that is actually our portion and we we can do it and we can live beyond what we have created to say, well, you know, I'm only human. Are you kidding me? Every time I hear hear that now, it's like like fingers on a on a chalkboard. It it is uh, being human is the biggest deal because we are the only creative species that actually can take on immortality. And we have we have Jesus as our example. How great is that? Yeah. How great is that? I'm going to over. You know, a lot of things. I think I'm going to say this, and then we'll we'll close, I'll let Helen say whatever else she wants to share. But one of the things that's really prevalent right now, I, we had a discussion um, a couple weeks back that my amazing friend Annetta um, shared about unnaming things. And it is so, that is such a reality because we have, we've learned the skill of, of this is that, of this is the framework I understand. Even, even the framework of Bible and I'm not, I'm not minimizing that in any way, shape, or form. That is a book that is mystery. It is literal mystery. Because the depths of where Father takes us through the things that are written are beyond our, our current understanding and comprehension. Yet that invitation is constantly calling our name, saying, hey, 
Come find the treasure that I've hidden for you. Come find the treasure that I've hidden for you in this little word and right here. Come find the treasure that I've hidden for you in this little word see right here. Because it's, it's limitless. There is no limit to it because of who our father is and who we are in him, who we are with him as one. Yeah. So, so the unnaming things isn't about, I have to, I'm in a place where I have to just keep my mouth shut. What that's an invitation in is to let go of the framework you've learned or previously used to understand, engage with, and experience something and allow me to show you something greater. It is that place that I've shared so many times of in Kim's language is the hey, I'll let hey, the void, the place of mystery that my, my, my framework of understanding doesn't get to play a part. It has to sit on the bleachers and be still so that father can show me something from his vastness and our vastness that I've not even thought was even a thing. And if I'm preoccupied with what I think I already know, or even my experience with, with experiences with him, even today, then I'm, I'm, my hands are already full because I already have all this stuff that he's already given me, talked to me about, shown me, right? I'm already experiencing. And if my hands are full with all that, then how can I fit anything else? So I've got to set all that stuff down and go, oh, that was really good. But, okay, my hands are empty. What else are we going to do? Right? Because that is the place of constantly pursuing him, constantly feasting on him. It is that place that Jesus talked about. You know not the bread I have I feast on. I'm totally rephrasing that right? That's what he's talking about. And that is the unseeing things. Because the, when you allow yourself to unsee what you think you know, or what you have known, to allow Father to give you new language and a new framework, then you can open your mouth and release that new framework. Release that new thing that Father's giving you. Yeah. And just to add to that, what if, just what if some of the things that we think we know aren't true? What if? What if? What are you going to do? What are you going to do with that? What are you going to do? And uh, I'm going to guarantee you uh, during the, the 12 weeks, if, we, uh, if, if you choose to join in, um, I guarantee you there's going to have to be some deconstruction, de deconstruction like the butterfly. You're going to have to dissolve some of those things so that you can actually reassemble, recreate, be recreated as a brand new creature. That's it. That's all. Yeah. What if? <laughs> what if? Yeah. I, I'm, I'm, I'm already in. I say yes. I'm already yeah. in. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Amen. Well, um, y'all this morning has been a ton of fun and, um, I hope all of you have been journaling or writing down, writing down questions, writing down statements or things that just blessed you or ministered to your heart. Because again, Wednesday night, 7 PM central, we're going to do the taste of what the mentoring session will look like and that is where we're going to take we're going to talk about questions we're going to talk about what father was showing each one of you during this session we're going to we're going to be doing some activations uh talking about what it is to be meditative to live a meditative life and, and then so much more, so much more at some point in time, I I'm hoping Gina is going to share again, 
what father what that encounter was with with her with the resurrection i cannot wait nina um but join us if you don't already have get an invitation from helen uh we post it in the chat and i don't know where it is could we could we post that one more time um kathy i would so appreciate it um thank you there it is um if you would like an invitation to the river 474 wednesday night meeting and you don't already get that please shoot them an email and request get that invitation it'll be again 7 p.m central time this coming wednesday night and we'll do the second part of the what if chronicles all right um helen do you have anything any last things you want to say no uh I'm just grateful. I'm just grateful for this uh, community and for how we're able to be transparent and be able to share. And and I'm uh, and I know as we go along that we're going to hear more of your voices and more of, of your uh, what ifs or and more of your your testimonies because it is in the collective that that uh, we're going uh, after this this meeting. Kim and I are going to be putting together uh, um, a model M, uh, PD. We're just calling it a PDF, like just a, um, our notes and, and things and, and uh, some suggestions just to give you a little bit of lay of the land of how things are going to work. Uh, Tamara has uh, uh, written out who was on this call. So it's not going to go online and then go out to everyone. I don't think, I don't think we have the time for that with our our technical um help but uh, i can definitely send out an email once we've got that pdf so that it gives you a, a sense a taste of what we'll be bringing into uh wednesday as we get together it'll be a completely different meeting so i i from my heart to all of yours i just want to say thank you i feel absolutely privileged uh to be at this time uh, I, I uh, like I you know how you you say um, when something bad happens why me God well I'm feeling the opposite I'm going Lord I can't believe that I uh, that I have this absolute pleasure and delight and privilege to walk with the most awesome team I like, got uh, really and truly to walk with with Kim and, and our our you should listen actually sometimes to our crazy talks because sometimes we can't stop laughing at each other and with each other which is part of what good friendships do so thanks Kim it's been a great great morning amen I feel the same way ditto 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 oh my gosh and I, I love I love what Greg put in there in the chat see I am doing a new thing Isaiah 43, 19, a new thing. Are y'all ready? Are y'all ready? It's going to awesome. be so good. All right. Father, we thank you for this morning. We, we thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Mm -hmm. So amazing. We're just in awe and wonder of your, just your amazingness. The places that you invite us have invited us to be a part of are just, we have no words other than to say thank you. Yeah. We give you all honor and praise and glory mm -hmm. that we get to do this with you. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Father. Lord, we bless every single person that was on this call this morning. Bless their lives, bless everything their hands touch, every relationship, their finances, their households, their children, their families. We bless them, pressed down, shaken together, running over. Father, that this week be an exponential increase in awareness of what you're doing and what you desire to be made manifest in our awareness. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Of your amazing I amness. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. All right, y'all. Wednesday night. Don't forget to join us, okay? I love you. Have a blessed day. And we'll see you Wednesday night on the river. On the river. Yay. Awesome. Bye, guys. I'll be there.